The coffin lid was unsealed and ever so carefully lifted off. Inside, a perfectly intact mummy, wrapped in fabric with a bit of skull showing. Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities has revealed details of the latest landmark discoveries to emerge from the Saqqara necropolis, south of Cairo. The vast burial grounds sit in what was once Memphis, the capital of ancient Egypt. The UNESCO World Heritage Site is home to more than a dozen pyramids, including Egypt's oldest, the Pyramid of Djoser. The site has yielded thousands of artifacts over decades of excavation. But among the biggest rewards for Egyptologists in this latest round of discoveries was the identity of a queen who died around 4,000 to 200 years ago. Come and join us. In this video, we will tell you about the Queen of Egypt. Her tomb was discovered at a site adjacent to the Pyramid of King Teti, the first pharaoh of the sixth dynasty of Egypt's Old Kingdom, the era between about 2680 and 2180 BC, known as the Age of the Pyramids. The excavation started in 2010, when we discovered a pyramid of a queen next to the pyramid of King Teti. But we didn't find a name inside the pyramid to tell us who the pyramid belonged to. Leading Egyptologist and former Minister of Antiquities, Dr. Zahid Hawassa, told CBS News. About a month ago, they discovered a funerary temple and now researchers finally have a name for the ancient female monarch, Queen Nyth, the wife of King Teti. Her name was finally found, carved on a wall in the temple and also written on a fallen obelisk in the entrance to her tomb. Come and join us. Midway down the shaft, the walls took on a honeycomb pattern with large shelves carved into them. Thousands of years ago, they held painted coffins and mummies wrapped in linen and reeds. While I descended farther, the shaft narrowed as I passed through a wood frame that supports the walls. Just above the bottom, water glistened on the walls like jewels. The basket touched the ground. The eyes adjusted to the dark. On the floor were two limestone coffins, both damaged, their contents looted, perhaps more than 2,000 years ago. Who had been buried here? How and why were their coffins lowered so far into the earth? And how did the thieves know where to look? Our civilization is full of mysteries, Merman Abba Yazid, a member of the archaeological team, said afterward, and we have discovered one of these mysteries. Before the inscription was found, King Teti was thought to have only two wives, Input and Chait but the realization he had a third neath with her own temple was prompting a rethink of those ancient days. We are rewriting history. Zahid Hawassa, Egypt's most well-known archeologist and its former antiquities minister would say later in the day, an archeological bonanza. Ancient history is being revealed in many parts of Egypt these days. In early February, Archaeologists found 16 human burial chambers at the site of an ancient temple on the outskirts of the northern city of Alexandria. Two of the mummies had golden tongues, which Egyptian antiquities ministry officials said were to allow them to speak in the afterlife. That same month, a massive 5,000-year-old brewery, believed to be the world's oldest, was discovered in the southern city of Suhag. The beer, researchers hypothesize, was used in burial rituals for Egypt's earliest kings. Last month, ruins of an ancient Christian settlement were discovered in the Naharaya oasis, nestled in Egypt's western desert. The find sheds new light on monastic life in the 5th century AD. And just last week, archaeologists announced they had unearthed a 3,000-year-old lost golden city in the southern city of Luxor, a discovery that could be the biggest since the tomb of the boy king Tutankhamen. With every discovery, the government's hopes rise that more tourists will arrive, bringing much-needed foreign currency and creating new jobs for millions. Egypt's tourism-dependent economy has suffered in the past decade from the political chaos that developed after the 2011 Arab Spring uprising. 
The Saqqara necropolis is at once a center of the country's aspirations and of its subterranean secrets. It was part of the burial grounds for the ancient capital, Memphis, its ruins now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In Saqqara, 17 Egyptian kings built pyramids to house their remains and possessions for what they believed was the transition to the afterlife. These pyramids include the world's oldest, the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser, built in the 27th century BC. Recent finds have drawn the world's attention, depicted in the Netflix film Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb and National Geographic's Kingdom of the Mummies TV series. In November, for instance, archaeologists dug up more than a hundred ornately painted wooden coffins, some with mummies and dozens of other artifacts, including amulets, funeral statues, and masks. Some of the coffins had been found on those shelves I had passed during my descent. A vast quantity of grave goods, including the wine jars, was found in the tomb of Queen Mary IX in the Umm al kasab necropolis in Abydos. The area is home to several royal tombs, primarily from the early dynastic period, including the pharaoh Narmer, who is generally credited with unifying Upper and Lower Egypt and founding the First Dynasty, c. 3000 BCE. Mary Neith is the only woman with her own tomb in the royal cemetery at Abydos, meaning she was likely the most powerful woman of the period. However, her true identity and role have remained a mystery. The discovery of extensive grave goods in her tomb helps cement her historical significance, as does the discovery of inscriptions testifying she was in charge of central government offices, including the treasury. These findings fuel speculation she may have been the first female pharaoh in ancient Egypt, and therefore the predecessor of the later queen Hatshepsut from the 18th dynasty. A king becomes a god after I emerged from the burial shaft, Hawass explained how the discoveries were reshaping the understanding of pharaonic times. Now we are writing a new chapter in the history of the Old Kingdom by adding the name of a new queen of Teti that he never announced before, said Hawass 73 standing in the temple's ruins wearing his trademark wide-brimmed Indiana Jones hat and a cream-colored safari jacket over a denim shirt and jeans. But there was more to consider than just the emergence of a new queen. Could Neith have also been Teddy's daughter? Hawassa's team had found inscriptions that referred to Neith as the daughter of a pharaoh. Incest would not be new for the ancients. In Egyptian lore, the god Osiris had married his sister Isis. Pharaohs were widely believed to have married their sisters and daughters, but that was during reigns later than Teti's sixth dynasty. Is she a daughter of a king of the fifth dynasty, or is she a daughter of Teti? Hawass asked. If she is a daughter of Teti, it would be the first time in Egyptian history to have a king marrying his daughter. A short walk across the sand was another burial shaft where even more had been discovered about Teti's legacy. Hawass down a ladder, 36 feet into the ground. At the bottom, in a space the size of a walk-in closet, were wooden coffins stacked in piles. They were painted in hues of blue and red, some with intricate images of gods and goddesses. They still contained mummies, Hawass said, and the names of the deceased were written on the decaying wood. His team had found 54 coffins here. From inscriptions on the coffins, the team had traced the subterranean cemetery to the 18th and 19th dynasties of Egypt's New Kingdom from more than 3,000 years ago. The discoveries were shedding light on a little understood period of Saqqara between 1570 and 1069 BC. Teti, it appears, had been worshipped as a god in the New Kingdom. Many of his followers wanted to be buried around his pyramid, often visiting coffin and mummification workshops in Saqqara. Hawass said. The poor were placed in simple wooden coffins, but the colorful, ornately decorated ones that was seeing had belonged to Teti's wealthy followers. Why are we asking this now? The tomb of Tutankhamun, the king of ancient Egypt who became famous when Howard Carter discovered his tomb nearly intact in 1922, 
is now a hot topic again. That's because Dr. Nicholas Reeves, an eminent Egyptologist and former director of the Amarna Royal Tombs Project, published a paper demonstrating how behind the walls of this small tomb there were more rooms as demonstrated by thin cracks in the decorative paintings. In his opinion, the rooms could contain the remains of Queen Nefertiti. The scans of the walls were done in November 2015, but the results were only released on 17 March 2016 by Dr. Mahmoud Almaty, the Minister of Egyptian Antiquities since 2014. What was found? Using ground-penetrating radar, radiating electromagnetic pulses into a surface, then analyzing the type of response, a team composed of the Egyptian minister and various specialists performed a scan of the walls of the burial chamber and treasury of the tomb of Tutankhamun. These scans indeed indicate that there are openings behind the west and north walls of the burial chamber. Further examination of the resulting data indicates that there are organic and metallic remains behind each of these voids. This means that they were intentionally created and carefully concealed, with access plastered over and then decorated to hide it from view. They were so well hidden that they lay undiscovered for nearly a century after the first opening of the tomb. Who was Tutankhamun? His tomb was discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter and Douglas Berry, and surprisingly seemed to have gone unnoticed by past and recent tomb robbers. The famous golden head mask exposed in the Egyptian Museum of Cairo is one of the most impressive pieces of its funerary goods, but the wooden panels and statues are just as unique in their designs. Tutankhamun was the 11th king of the 18th dynasty, 16th, 13th century BCE, who reigned for nine years and died when he was approximately 18 years old. DNA analyses indicate that he was the son of Akhenaten, the previous king, and of Akhenaten's sister, a royal concubine. He died with no heirs, which allowed two army generals to access the throne, and followed by horsemen. What more do we want to know? Tutankhamun's tomb is unique not only because it was one of a few preserved from robbers, but also because its plan differs greatly from the other tombs of the period. The tombs were carved and excavated by workmen within the Theban mountain, on the opposite bank of modern Luxor, thus hiding the royal remains and funerary furniture deep into the mountain. The funerary material that was uncovered was unprecedented for any king in our records. This means that a lot of it seems unique. It is possible this new discovery will change our opinion if it appears that another member of the royal family was buried in these hidden rooms. Why is everyone referring to this as Nefertiti's tomb? In 2015, Dr. Nicholas Reeves published his theory about potential rooms in Tutankhamun's burial and mentioned that they would be a likely final resting place for Akhenaten's wife, Nefertiti. During his reign, she had a major role in the new religion and possibly two in the governing of the country. She survived her husband and may have become a regent of Tutankhamun in his early years, or may even have assumed the ruling position on her own as Pharaoh Neferneferuaten. In the Egyptian Museum, many mummies have been scanned and identified during the Egyptian Mummy Project. From all the currently known mummies, none match the age and physique of Nefertiti. One mummy, who had been suggested to be Nefertiti by Dr. Joanne Fletcher, has in fact been identified as Tutankhamun's mother, the royal concubine. It is possible the mummy of Akhenaten himself may be among those for which the lack of contextualized information renders identification complex. Why should we care that this tomb has been found now? This could be an extraordinary discovery. Not only the fact that there may well be precious objects, unseen creations and lengthy texts, but mostly because this is a unique opportunity to understand the way Egyptians manage their death. As it is only happening now, this discovery will be recorded with the latest technology, and the process itself will be a matter for posterity. How will it change our understanding of ancient Egyptians? In Egypt, thanks to the dry climate, 
human and organic remains are extremely well preserved. Understanding the concepts and designs of their burial customs provides an insight into their culture and habits. Evidently, the individuals like Tutankhamun, buried in the Valley of the Kings, were mostly of royal birth or closely related to it. But as ancient Egyptian society fit a very clear hierarchy, we can expect the actions of those at the top to be reflected on those at the base of the pyramid. We will need to adapt the data slightly to understand the common people. But the archaeological evidence hidden here will build on our understanding and knowledge of a whole civilization which started more than 5,000 years ago. Placed inside the coffins were miniature wooden boats, games, pottery, and tiny gold pieces to carry and use in the afterlife. Little statuettes and amulets carry the shapes and names of gods and pharaohs. Inside a storeroom, Ahmed Tarek and Mayas Rabea are placing the jagged pieces of the papyrus together, like trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle. They are also restoring and studying artifacts to gain more understanding of how Egyptians prepared themselves for the afterlife. Shards of pottery found in the rubble unveil new details of ancient life. Many were imported, evidence that trade flourished between Egypt and Palestine, Cyprus, Crete, and Syria. Hawassa expects to encounter more mysteries. It will take 20 years to fully uncover the secrets here, he says. In Saqqara, we have found only 30% of what's underneath, he said. It is a site where if you dig anywhere, you'll find something. Thanks for watching.